Welcome back, everyone. In the game in Albuquerque, the Washington Huskies, the number one seed in the Albuquerque Regional, trailing Louisville at halftime 47-35. Washington's biggest halftime deficit all season long was eight points in the Pac-10 final. They came back to beat Arizona in that game, but the Huskies have been their own worst enemies tonight. Turnovers and missed shots. They've only shot 39% credit Louisville, but they also have missed some shots that they normally make. Louisville's been terrific on offense. We're going to take a look at how Washington a lot of these a lot of these fouls this game's being called really tight if that's going to be the case the rest of the game that will continue to favor Louisville all right guys 47 35 Louisville at halftime more in just a moment Illinois 39, Wisconsin Milwaukee 32, second half about to get underway. Let's take you back to Chicago where we rejoin Dick Enberg and Jay Billis for the second half. We're ready to start the second half with Louisville leading at 47 to 35. A one versus a four. Washington in foul trouble. Two of their starters, Trey Simmons, Nate Robinson, playing with three. And certainly Louisville able to take advantage of that by again attacking on offense. Nate Robinson off the glass, no. And it's taken away. Bobby Jones. And he's fouled. Louisville developed an awful lot of momentum as Washington was forced to go to a zone. And Francisco Garcia really took advantage, hitting some threes that got his confidence up. And Louisville began to attack that Washington defense. Regardless of what they put out there, Louisville able to convert. Miles picked up his third foul. As Jones gets the first one. Here's the most important piece of information. Washington led the game 23-16. Then Nate Robinson picked up his third foul. From that point on, Louisville went on a 31-12 run. And the significance of that, obviously, we talked about this, the emotional letdown, having one of your best guys on the bench with three fouls, but just as importantly, the turnover situation. Louisville with 10 points off of eight Washington turnovers. Seven of those turnovers from Washington were created by guys off the bench trying to fill the shoes of Nate Robinson. Here comes Robinson, along with Simmons. Jones. Ball dipped up and in. Looked like Simmons got a hand on it. Or Jensen. And in about seven or eight minutes, we will take you guys back to the Milwaukee-Wisconsin-Illinois game. Well, again, look at Washington going back to their bread and butter. Extended defense. Had a lot of success from the beginning of the first half. Taekwon Dean has been terrific from the three-point line. His fourth three of the game. Here's the bracket in Albuquerque. The winner takes on the winner of our next game between Texas Tech and West Virginia. Inside, Jensen hopping and knocks one down. Tell you what, Mike Jensen, normally a face-up shooter. Not really a guy with a penchant for back to the basket, but with his size, he's got to take advantage of that paint. The Washington starters in the first half were a combined two of 11 from the field. That's what I mean by Nate Robinson being out with foul trouble. Didn't hurt them as much offensively as it did with regard to ball handling. Will Conroy, the only guy out there really able to hand the ball. Inside, Palacios lays it in. Nice pass by Ellis Miles. Well, Ellis Miles, a terrific passer again. You know, he's the kind of guy, he had a triple-double this year, 10 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists. He's kind of a conduit for that Louisville offense. 115 assists on the season. Robinson can't get it to fall. Nate Robinson really struggling to find his rhythm. He only has three points in this game. He's the leading scorer for the Huskies at 16 to flip. Another bad decision by Francisco Garcia trying to thread the needle. Seven for three. And Jones and Garcia got tangled up in there. And again, Louisville has made this a physical game in the paint. Tipped around. Conroy can't hold on on the sideline. And let's take a look at the backcourt for Washington. Well, they're two leading scorers. Again, having some trouble. Slowed by 
foul trouble and when you're in foul trouble and you get back in the ball game you play a little tentatively you don't want to pick up that extra foul both of these guys will put it on the floor particularly Robinson and go to the basket Simmons more of a three point shooter but it has a tendency foul trouble does to really take away your aggressiveness and that makes you tentative in trying to get things done particularly on the offensive end and a foul Miles putting it on the floor. Greg Gumbel in New York, Louisville by 12. We'll keep track of that game for you. Meanwhile, the second half of the Panthers and the Fighting Illini from Chicago. From Chicago, I say, comes your way right after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular. Raising the bar. Lorenzo Romar not happy with the way this game is being officiated right now. Well, he's displeased with some of the close calls against his main guys. You take a look at this one on Simmons where he draws his fourth. There's some contact there. I'm not so sure that Larry O'Bannon didn't create the contact by breaking the plane. Simmons maybe just a little bit too close with three fouls. That was his fourth. And now you look at Simmons, Roy with four, Robinson with three. That's a tough situation for the Huskies to be in. But how have the Cardinals been able to draw fouls the way they've been doing it so far? Well, again, their team is very smart. They will draw the contact, and once they get contact, they will keep the contact. Even if the defender tries to get away and avoid it, they maintain contact and continue to go to the basket. O'Bannon misses the free throw. The votes are in, and you, the viewers, have spoken. Find out which was chosen as your all-time favorite episode of Everybody Loves Raymond. Don't miss TV's number one comedy, Monday on CBS. 62-52, Louisville. Cardinals in the zone. Williams. Smith. And a whistle inside. Eleven thirty-six to play in the second half. Louisville with a sixty-two to fifty-two lead over top-seeded Washington here in Albuquerque. And the Washington Huskies with an uphill battle as they try to close this deficit. And you take a look again at Jamal Williams with the basket inside. They're trying to close this deficit with their main guys in foul trouble. Brandon Roy, Trey Simmons, both with four. Nate Robinson with three, yet to close the deficit, they have to play aggressive defense and hit the offensive glass, areas of the game where you pick up your fouls. Jamal Williams, the junior from Corona, California for Washington, has 16 off the bench. Miles with the offensive rebound. Now he backs his man down across the lane, got it. And a look at the bracket. The winner of this game takes on the winner of our next game between Texas Tech and West Virginia. Ten-point lead for Louisville. Cardinals have led by as many as 14. And against the 2-3 zone, this is where you got to make a concerted effort to hit the offensive glass. You've got gaps that you can attack if you're Washington. So take a look at the foul trouble for Washington. Simmons and Roy, both with four. Robinson with three, Williams with three, and Jones has two. As Nate Robinson goes to the line, he's 0 for 5 this evening. Only three points all coming at the line. Well, Nate Robinson having a little bit of difficulty getting shots against the taller backcourt of Louisville. You know, you're talking about Larry O'Bannon at 6'4", Taekwon Dean at 6'3", and of course Francisco Garcia at 6'7". And when they play that zone, they're long, and they've got quickness with cover the shooter, so Robinson really not in a position to get open shots. Robinson picked up his third foul at the 8.51 mark of the first half, did not return to the game after being taken out. And during that time, Louisville went on a 31-12 run. Taekwon D. And a foul over the back should go against the Cardinals. Let's take a look at what Robinson and Simmons have done today. Well, again, Trey Simmons able to get a little bit of offense going, but not close to a season average. And we just talked about Nate Robinson's difficulties. A lot of it has to do with his size and the fact that he's playing against his own. That foul was picked up by Conroy, his third. Here come the Huskies. Conroy with the ball inside. Beautiful shot. And Williams misses the layup and will head the other way. Come in. 
here in an attempt to attack inside against that zone. And everybody going after the ball there. Collision. Take a look at Williams again going missing the easy layup. And Williams tries to go after it and really undercuts his teammate Jones. You know that's plain hustle but sometimes obviously it works against you and we just hope that Bobby Jones will get up off the deck okay. Actually I don't think that's Bobby Jones. Oh, no. I think that I'm may sorry. be Jamal Williams. Bobby Jones did get up. And Jamal Williams has been terrific in this game. That 16 is Williams. points. Williams is actually the one in going after the ball that created the undercut system and situation and he got the worst of it. Bobby Jones and Larry O'Bannon exchanging words at the end of the play. Take another look at what happened. Again Williams misses the layup a little too quick and there he goes after it and. But overall Jamal Williams has been the guy that's really helped keep the Huskies in the ball game. Post up moves second chance opportunities. He's been the strength around the basket for the Washington Huskies. Averages 10 a game and he's. Got 16 tonight on 8 of 16 shooting 6 rebounds also. Well he was second in the Pac 10 in field goal percentage and you can see why. He takes high percentage shots and really works hard on both ends of the floor underneath the basket. 64 55 Louisville trying to advance to the Elite Eight. O'Bannon guarded by Smith turns it over. Here's Nate Robinson and Robinson will get his first field goal as the 5 9 man jams it down. And when Nate Robinson jams the rest of his team gets a lift. He is the catalyst on this Washington team. Now they're playing like they have life. Well, they, they've really extended that defense right now. That's the success they had in the first half. Oh, that'll quiet him down. Taekwon Dean, an effortless three-point shooter. Inside her eyes. Beautiful look. 67-59. And Gus, I'm really surprised that, surprised that Washington, after makes, by Louisville doesn't continue to push the ball up the floor. They've had success in beating the defense down as they did just then. 67 59 Garcia has four threes in this game. O'Bannon rips off Miles, rips it down. Palacios wide open. And the rebound goes to Smith. Huskies trying to get closer right here. And you can feel the energy start to shift. Jensen inside Rollins again 67 61 and the Washington fans are in this one now Dean off the dribble Palacios to the bucket we mentioned in the first half that's how you beat the pressure spread the floor take them off the bounce and if they're not going to help take it all away if the Huskies help find the open shooter with a kick out Louisville gets back into the two three zone it's caused Washington some problems ball batted out of bounds by O'Bannon it's caused Nate Robinson as many problems as anyone you see in a dead ball situation Lorenzo Romar steps out on the floor and he's reminded by the official that uh, you can't do that have to stay on the sideline coach Romar terrific role model mentor to these guys Smith Dean with the rebound lead pass O'Bannon and he's fouled good foul by Conroy he will make O'Bannon earn it at the line 751 to play in the second half Cardinals up 69 61. We'll get you right back to Albuquerque first checking into Chicago D Brown having one of those nights along with his running mate Darren Williams this is Brown top of the key for three of his 16 points Illinois leads at 58 46 1142 to play back to Albuquerque Gus Johnson and Len Elmore. Sixty nine sixty one Louisville 
leading Washington. 7.51 to play in the second half. O'Bannon at the line, gets the first, and the duo of tight Downtown. And kicking out to the shooters. And that's really how they were able to stymie Washington in the first half. After Washington did a nice job of turning them over and making Louisville uncomfortable, they finally decided to spread the floor a little bit and attack that man-to-man uh, -man as well as his own Washington threw up. Lead back up to 10 for Louisville. Robinson off the dribble to the basket, and he draws the foul. And, man, you talk about attacking the rim. You know, at 5'9", look at Nate Robinson. He was about to dunk that ball. He didn't let go of it. He didn't use the board. He was going straight to the 10. Palacios picks up his third. Nate Robinson, only one field goal in this game. He averages 16 points per game on the year. Leading scorer on this Washington Huskies team. Next Thursday, Survivor returns to its regular night with a first so incredible, you have to see it to believe it. Don't miss Survivor one week from tonight on CBS. So Nate Robinson, his father Jacques was an all-star running back at Washington. As a matter of fact, in 1985, he was the MVP of the Orange Bowl. Was also the MVP of the Rose Bowl in 82. <laughs> 71 to 62. Taekwon Dean great with the ball. He's got O'Bannon. Miles Garcia running the baseline. Comes off the screen. Guarded by Conroy. Fires. And a foul. This one going the other way. Palacios going over the back. Well, Washington doing a much better job now of staking some claim to the real estate in the paint. Trying to seal off the boards and, you know, forcing Louisville to push him off. Palacios with four fouls. And Louisville over the limit. They have 17 fouls, so Williams is back in the game after going out. They checked him for concussion. He's fine. And he's shooting one and one. Washington 12 of 20 from the free throw line. <laughs> 71 63 Louisville leads top seed in Washington. Cardinals have led by as many as 14, but the Huskies won't go away as Jamal Williams misses the second free throw. And the one thing you have to do when you make a good defensive stance and you get a free opportunity, you have to capitalize. Washington really digging in defensively right now. That's where they're going to make up this deficit, and that's where they're going to win the ball game. George hops to the basket. Garcia downtown. Francisco, five threes. And once again, inside out. Penetration, draw the defense, and kick it outside to the shooters, who in an inside out situation, flow into the shots. Louisville, 11 of 25 from the three-point line. In the corner, Simmons. That's a push. And Taekwon Dean has yet another rebound. His eighth. Simmons frustrated right now. Took a bad shot. You know, it's difficult to hit threes on a lateral pass. As I mentioned, inside out is where you want to go. Garcia off the dribble. Looks for his buddy. Catch and shoot. Dean, and this one knocked out of bounds. And it's last touch by the Cardinals. Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Three-point field goals, Louisville 11 of 26. Get complete game stats at cbssportsline.com. They're 11 of 26. Taekwon Dean is 5 of 10. Francisco Garcia is 5 of 8. So the backcourt has been terrific from the perimeter for the Cardinals. Well, they've hit their number of 10 or more. And again, 18 and 0 when they hit 10 or more from beyond the arc. So it remains to be seen if that holds true. Otis George with the steal. Time starting to work against the Huskies. All top, all four rather, number one seeds are still alive. George, and he buries one. Look at Otis George. Otis, my man. <laughs> Shooting the jumper off the bounce. 76-63. Inside Roy lays it in. Again, Washington doing the right things now against the zone. As I mentioned before, they'll have to win it on the defensive end. 5.26 to play in the second half. 
76-65. Also with Chicago in on the floor for Milwaukee as a White Sox fan, so they have some fun arguments during the baseball year. Well, he's yet to score. And a foul called on the rebound. I believe that was on Brown again. James Wright doing an outstanding job of working that second slot no, to get, get in an offensive rebound. Ticket James Augustine, his first. Milwaukee's in the one and one. Eight team fouls on Illinois. Five called against Milwaukee. Another miss. Free throws starting to haunt uh, the comeback efforts of this Panther team. They're eight for 14 tonight. All right, not a good free throw shooter. That was not a good stroke. Brown from long range. Another three for D. 19 for him. You can't get any deeper on the sideline. The back of his shoes were just about touching the sideline. He almost ran right into our broadcast location. Tiger to Boo Davis for three. Rebound Tiger. Tucker, the big scorer for the Panthers. Boo Davis will fire the three, misses again. Darren Williams, along with scoring and assist, gets another rebound. Well, if the three is there, it's okay to take it, but Wisconsin-Milwaukee relying on the three a little bit too much. Great read by D. Brown. Brown off on that three-point attempt. Good offensive rebound underneath by Roger Powell Jr. and the Reverend will go to the line. Powell just a horse inside going up strong. He got the bump by Joe Tucker. Tucker commits his third foul. The Illini by 13. Court, great pressure by the Huskies. Huskies are shooting 43% from the field, 24 of 56. On the season, they're a 48% shooting team, averaging 87 points per game. And the flip side of it is Washington getting that turnover. You know, that's the defensive end where they're going to win this game. They don't have much trouble scoring when they can get possession. Conroy looks inside, throws it away. Knocked away by O'Bannon. Now Taekwon in the front court and a reach in foul ball against Will Conroy. Well, Will Conroy, he's a senior, but he's starting to sense it is ticking away the time and his opportunity. He makes a bad decision in trying to split the defenders with a pass on the offensive end and then a foul that wasn't necessary on the defensive end. You got to play D. It's not about gambling. It's about making stops. Taekwon Dean, 17 points, eight rebounds. You know, you follow a guy like Tyquan Dean in that situation, he's 82% free throw shooters. It's like giving them points. And the last thing that Washington wants to do is give points away. At 14 points, six rebounds against Georgia Tech. As the second. Under five to go, 78 to 65. And Louisville. Pick it up full court. Now they back up and get into the zone. Huskies, Lenny, have to hit a couple of three-point shots to make them get out of it. Roy inside, though, lays it in. Well, I'm not so sure. I mean, right now, they're doing a nice job of getting it on the short corners inside the sweet spot of the zone. Their problem is they can't stop anybody. They've got to be able to stop Louisville in several trips in succession and then muster up some, some offense. Garcia to O'Bannon. O'Bannon off the bounce. And a whistle. Foul called against Washington. All right, let's take a look at the bracket here in Albuquerque. Washington, Louisville, the winner takes on the winner of Texas Tech, West Virginia, our second game, a 6-7. And in Chicago, Illinois leading Milwaukee, Arizona, Oklahoma State. That should be a terrific game. In Syracuse, Carolina, Nova. Nova playing without Curtis Sumter, one of their best players. Wisconsin, NC State. Julius Hodge has been terrific. Duke and the Spartans, they met earlier this year. Michigan State almost beat them. Utah and Kentucky. Well, that Duke-Michigan State game will absolutely be 
you know, one of the most exciting and suspenseful games. Michigan State on a roll after defeating Vermont, demonstrating their athleticism. And Duke, there's no grittier, guttier team in America, a team that knows how to execute down the stretch. They don't beat themselves. Should be terrific. J.J. Redick struggling a little bit in the tournament with his shot. Yeah, but they win. But that means that, uh, Other you know, guys, Daniel somebody's going to break out. That's right. Ewing Williams stepping up. Nate Robinson has four fouls for Washington. He picked it up on the other end. Williams heads to the line. Ellis Miles has now picked up his fourth. And Jamal with a sensational performance. 17 points. Gets the first free throw next Thursday. Without a Trace returns with a startling new episode and a secret you won't believe. Don't miss a new Without a Trace Thursday after CSI. Well, you look at Jamal Williams again. We talked about him, a transfer from New Mexico, has acquitted himself extraordinarily well. Obviously accustomed to playing on this floor, but he has been primarily the inside presence for the Washington Huskies, something that's absolutely necessary in breaking that 2 3 zone. Possession error on the favor of the Cardinals. Dean Garcia in the backcourt. Miles bounce pass beautifully done. O'Bannon. And then we've seen Otis George handle the ball. We just saw Miles handle the ball. And Taekwon Dean is hurt. Taekwon Dean writhing in pain. And it looks like it's the right leg. Let's take a look at what happened. You take a look at Dean receive right here in the lower right of your corner. He throws it up, and it looks like he just came down awkwardly. May have stepped on the foot of a Husky. And this could potentially be a devastating blow for Louisville. Taekwon Dean, not only a great scorer, but in this tournament, he's doing an excellent job rebounding, and he can't put a lot of pressure on that right leg. Hopefully he can walk it off. Well, now he's starting to trot, so it's good to see him get up off the deck. Let's take a look at the game summary. Three-point shooting the key for the Ville. 11 of 26, and they're also out-rebounding Washington by eight. And again, it's the Louisville defense and the foul trouble for the Huskies that's pretty much limited them offensively. Remember, they're the number two scoring team in the nation averaging about 87 points a game and at this point with four minutes left they're at 68. Now, that doesn't mean they won't reach their number because they're an explosive team but the Louisville change of defenses half court pressure two three zone has really stymied Washington forced them to take a lot of time before they get a shot off. Conroy down the lane and a foul called against the Cardinals. 349 to play second half. 81 68 Louisville. Best in the nation for some 17 consecutive weeks at Illinois showing you why here from Rosemont Illinois 619 left. The Illini by 14, no turnovers this entire second half. And they have 18 assists, Jay Villas, on 26 field goals in the game. Well, on the season, they have assists on about 70% of their field goals. And with all the movement that they get offensively, one of the things that Illinois does, they occupy the weak side of your defense. And that leaves openings. You can't get any help. You're vulnerable to drives. If you do help, you're always leaving somebody open. And this team finds you if you're open. They take it under 10 once again, but they're better hurry now. Williams sees the clock. Three, two, he'll take it himself. And beat the buzzer, but doesn't drop the blank shot. Tiger clears to Hill. McCant, long bomb. He got hit. Breaking out Luther Head. Oh, what a play by Boo Davis to block the shot from the backside. Hill at the other end. Another three is missed. But the rebound to Tucker, the omnipresent junior of this Panther team. And the foul is the fourth on Luther Head. Boo Davis with the athleticism taking off first, and Luther Head shows the ball. Instead of going in off of two feet, squaring up to where Davis had no choice but to climb his back. Luther
Luther had exposed the basketball and allowed it to be blocked, but still an amazingly athletic play by Davis. Head out and Rich McBride returns for Illinois. Head uh, moving slowly with that hamstring suffered in practice this year. And here's Joe Tucker at the line. He's uh, at 30 points in the game, twice his average. And this to equal his career high, 31. Oh, what a tournament. Just a workhorse. Does it down low. His versatility, really impressive. The, his ability to take you out on the perimeter, put the ball on the floor. I think he's most dangerous when he's driving a bigger guy. And he can finish with either hand around the basket. That's a career high now at 32 points for Joe Tucker. But there hasn't been enough support from the rest of his scoring mates. And they have not been able to enjoy the turnover success that they engineered against Bama and B.C. Illinois has done a very nice job of keeping the floor spread against the pressure that Wisconsin Milwaukee can put on. They've also switched zones very effectively against that 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press. 12-point Illinois lead. They continue to melt the clock with that lead. Darren Williams lost the handle for a moment. Five minutes to go. D. Brown. Second chance, Roger Powell. Out of bounds to Illinois. Coming next month to CBS, thousands of years ago, insects ruled the earth. Now they want it back. Locusts invading CBS in April. Well, that's what this Wisconsin-Milwaukee team wanted to do all game long was swarm. Not enough to eat, though. Illinois kept that ball away from them. Uh, a flawless second half in terms of protecting the pumpkin. And what they've done, they've attacked the pressure at the point it's applied. They've turned, really, Wisconsin-Milwaukee's pressure against them and gotten some opportunities out of it. Just did beat the five-second clock. Powell with the pass as Augustine came up top to help him out. Down to eight on the shot clock. Williams inside, and that'll be a charge on Darren Williams. A late call, and it's his fourth foul. He joins Luther Head with four. It appears Head, playing with four, will give Williams the break. Ingram also with four off the bench. Well, the main thing to keep those guards available because this pressure is not going to stop this Wisconsin Milwaukee team not only very tough minded but they're in terrific shape as well I've not seen a better conditioned team than this Illinois team good pass Tucker just does control McCants will fire the three and hit so Ed McCants held scoreless in the first half has 13 in the second half and the Illini lead is nine presence of Darren Williams out of the ball game. Luther head. Scramble and Travis is the call. The line eye fans don't like that. 356 to go. Rose Pearls, Panthers keep digging. It is still not time to panic for Washington, but they've got to step up their defense. We talk about their ability to cut off passing lanes and deny. And now they've got some full court pressure applied right here. Garcia, O'Bannon, Miles to the basket. Nice pass. George lays it in. And Gus, we discussed it before. The ability of the Louisville big men to handle the ball so well really negates the press. Ellis Miles just terrific off the bounce and creating for us. Conroy for three. Ten point game. Do the Huskies have to start thinking about the three-point shot now every time down? No, you still want to play within your game. If the shot presents itself, you take it. If you get a quick two opportunity, you take that as well. But it still comes down to they need more possessions. They've got to turn Louisville over or make Louisville shoot the ball quickly and get the rebound and come back down. 2.25 to go. Palacios ready to throw it in bounds. He's got O'Bannon, Garcia, Miles, and Dean. 
Huskies need turnovers. Dean back in the game after the leg grabs. Now Palacios showing his handle. Miles O'Bannon. And once again, trigger man Ellis Miles gets the ball three on one. That's his sixth assist. He came into this game with 115. Aiden Robinson continues to struggle offensively. He's one of seven from the field. And Miles is fouled, bringing it up the floor. See, I think Washington starts settling for the threes much too early. Too early. Much too early. You know, it's a 12-point deficit right now. A few minutes ago, it was 9 or 11. You still have enough possessions in there to keep going for the quick twos instead of the long-range, lower-percentage three. So Miles, and for a man that is 6 feet 7, 245 pounds, not only a very good rebounder, but a terrific passer. Next Thursday, Survivor returns to its regular night with a... This dunk by Larry O'Bannon, two of his 17, under two minutes to play now. Louisville, 87-75 over Washington. Back to Chicago, Dick Enberg and Jay Billis. Check the CBS Sportsline stat of the game and led by those three all-conference guards had that Williams and Brown 51 to 22 Illinois has outscored the backcourt of UW Milwaukee they have countered this pressure very effectively but if the Panthers can get a score here they will feel right back in this and it will energize their comeback hopes lob inside to Tucker but a little too tall from McCants Bruce Pearl calling a play out of that timeout, trying to go with the lob, but just ticked the rim. Illinois, once again, using as much of that 35 as they can, but Tiger Dave will steal it from Augustine. McCants takes it into the alley. Tiger fires the three. Oh, that would have been big. James Wright able to get the offensive rebound. Oh, almost stolen, and it was picked off by Head. What a play by Luther Head. Boy, the anticipation and the guts, and Luther Head playing on great courage right now with this hamstring injury. The time now, the enemy of Milwaukee, and Illinois knows it, so they'll chew up as much clock as they can. Head, however, sees Powell wide open, and Powell another easy two he has 12 the exchange off the low stacks and another great read by head to curl that screen and find the open Powell on the other end Ed McCants way outside gets his own rebound takes it inside and misses the layup Augustine with a rebound all of this uh, Illinois holding its lead with Karen Williams at the scores bench unable to get in Illinois, two minutes from the Elite Eight. And in no hurry right now. They're going to make Wisconsin-Milwaukee guard for the entire clock. And Head takes it in, can't hit the scoop. Chris Hill is slapped in the face by Augustine. Unintentional. His second foul. Luther Head, in my opinion, the best defender on this Illinois team. Shooting the gap and stealing the ball away from Joe and Tucker, and then the outstanding curl of the screen. Setting up Roger Powell Jr. for the nice finish off the glass. And Head, you can see him noticeably limping, but showing great toughness in this game. Chris Hill at the line, still without a point in the game. Averaged eight on the season. Darren Williams in and Rich McBride out. Luther Head uh, Monday in practice tweaked that hamstring and they didn't know if he was up to 100 percent but he was not about to be taken out of the lineup. And even on a sore leg he has played brilliantly especially at that defensive end. Illinois essentially has three point guards on the floor now with Brown, Head, and Williams all can handle and pass. Awfully tough to trap. 
Kentucky not fouling for 20 seconds going off that 35. And time running out of them. Down to 120 left in the game. And Illinois wisely. Burning clock. Luther head. That may be the final dagger. McCants over D. Brown. It almost banked in. And here's Augustine. And we're in the final minute. And a foul in the backcourt, but they are ready to move on to Saturday's Elite Eight. Look at the Illini across the way. ...by Xavier in the second round felt really badly the fact that they gave up that lead. And guys like Taekwon Dean and Francisco Garcia, who kind of disappeared in that game, they were the mainstays today. And check this out, Louisville, with their 34-31-4 and four record, it's their best record since... The 1982-83 season, when they were 32 and four, went to the final four, lost to Houston. Guess where? Higher life and working their way up the ranks and brought two outstanding teams to the Sweet 16. Well, it has really brought this Illinois team along the right way. The players fought him at first, but they have come around and they are now a true team. Tiger unable to hit the three, and that's been the downfall of this Panther club. They hit the three against Boston College in Alabama, but not tonight. Against it's been a terrific season for the Washington Huskies. Number one seed. Pac-10 regular season and tournament title. Sweet 16 appearance, a little disappointing right now for Lorenzo Romar, but Coach Romar just such a positive man, such a great chess master when it comes to coaching his team, and they will be back. Well, again, obviously last year, Huskies were shocked in the second round by UAB. This year, they took it one step further, so you can look at the progress that Lorenzo Romar has made. You know, he's still going to have Augustine is 10 and 10 points and rebounds. That's got to be a tough one to figure. Eddie Sutton's Cowboys against the Wildcats of Lute Olson. All five starters for Illinois averaged in double figures on the season. All five scored in double figures tonight. Knocked away. And it's Powell for Illinois. It's fitting that this game should end with the great hands of Illinois defensively and the ball in the hands of Darren Williams. Williams and Brown playing catch, each with 21 to lead the Illini tonight. Tucker with 32. The Cinderella team from Milwaukee. They made a lot of fans in this NCAA tournament season. The Horizon champions beating two highly ranked teams, but fall to number one tonight. Bruce Pearl shakes the hand of Bruce Weber. Illinois moves on to the Elite Eight. Final seconds in Albuquerque winding down. Louisville and Washington. Albuquerque, 93-79. The Cardinals are the first of eight. Defeating Washington and the first number one seed is down. Greg Gumbo will be back with the road to the final four after these messages. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA championship. Give me the ball, Pops. Come get it. back to our New York studios everyone as we continue to travel the road to the final four two teams moving on and two others eliminated here is the lineup coming up at 10 1 Eastern time out in Albuquerque it'll be seven seed West Virginia against six seed Texas Tech and tipping at 10 2 in Chicago the second game of the night there third seed Arizona against second seed Oklahoma State Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis 
Let's say it. Louisville, Narfel, the Garthog. <laughs> they are the first to knock off a number one seed, and and uh, and you guys said it. Louisville just played a great game. They were terrific. I mean, that was actually as stupendous a performance as you'll see. I mean, they did everything. They controlled Temple with the zone, got in the got Washington in the foul trouble by attacking, and then knocked down three point shots every time Washington tried to make a second half run. Let's check the highlights of Francisco Garcia after the game. Francisco Garcia, 23 points, 5 of 8 from beyond the arc, and it looked as though when they went to that 2-3 zone, your eyes lit up. I mean, I knew it. Um, I knew it was going to go into the zone. One part of the game, I was waiting for it. I, I just got happy when they went to the zone. I said, man, I got to take over. Well, did any of the lingering memories from last year when you guys went out in the second round after having a lead against Xavier, did that enter into your thought process coming into this game? I mean, every half time where we go in, we have a lead, we talk about it. You know, we can't let on. We just left for our mistakes last year. And this year, you know, I got experienced teammates, and they back me up all the time. Well, congratulations on a terrific game. One last question. Again, moving on here, you look at Texas Tech, you look at West Virginia. Have you seen them at all? What are your thoughts? I mean, they very, they both very good. West Virginia can shoot the ball. And the Sate's uh, very strong basketball team. They're both very good. Congratulations. Terrific game. All right. Thank you. Terrific game indeed. 23-point effort by Francisco Garcia as Louisville knocks off the top seed in the Albuquerque bracket, 93-79. to Clark, you just talked about how Washington really could... Points. Illinois rolls into the Elite Eight where they'll meet the uh, winner of Arizona, Oklahoma State. And uh, like I said, it was a pretty one-sided affair. Even though Wisconsin-Milwaukee shrunk the margin in the later stages of the game, I just never felt like they were actually going to win the ball game. Yeah, Illinois now an impressive 35-1 and one on the season. The fact that that margin was shrinking a little bit, Clark, you kept saying Illinois has a 10 with Illinois coach Bruce Weber and Darren Williams. Bruce, let me start with you. Just a very impressive win on any number of levels. What, what stands out in your mind? Well, I, I, we, made, we made good decisions on offense. Got the ball at, at certain times to the right people. Open man, we've done it all year. Very unselfish. Darren played a great floor game for us. And then we guarded. You know, they're a high, ex, high explosive offensive team. And we guarded. Other than Tucker is, is getting out on the break on us, I thought we did a nice job defensively. You sure did. And Darren, 21 points, eight assists. You were really able to control this game, but also great defense from the backcourt. Yeah, that's, that's something I looked to come out and do today because we knew they were going to speed us up and try to force turnovers. So it's my, it's my job as a point guard to you know, control the game and get everybody involved. You guys went to the 16s last year. You got beat by number one seeded Duke. How much did that experience help you tonight? Oh, man, it's great to get past that, 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 that round. You know, ever since last year, um, we lost to Duke. You know, we want to go farther the next year. You know, now we're here. We just got to make the most of the opportunity. Well, you did tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Harmon Katayan with the victorious Illini 77-63 was the final score. You know, the Illinois team that we saw tonight is probably the one that people are picturing as the number one overall seed, but we've first number one seed to fall in this tournament was Washington. 93-79, Louisville a winner. Tracy Wolfson, Wolfson with head coach Lorenzo Romar a while ago. Coach, obviously a disappointing night. Fouls a real problem throughout the evening. How much did that affect your game plan? Well, First of all, we got no one to blame for the fouls, but we did foul and um, had two of our best players on the bench early in the game, and obviously that affects anyone. And still, we came back and tried to fight, but that's just a very good basketball team. We weren't able, able to overcome the deficit. When you go into that locker room and face your players, what will you say to them tonight? Not quite sure. I know I'm proud of them, uh, but I'm not, to give you the exact words, I'm not sure yet. A very emotional, you're very emotional right now. Is this really hard for you to take? Well, it is, but, you know, keep it in perspective. I thought we had an outstanding year. And uh, we didn't come here just to be in the Sweet 16 and go home. But that's how it is. And uh, I'm still proud of our guys. We fought all year. We, we went farther than most of the nation thought we could go. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. Uh, very dejected Lorenzo Romar who did a terrific job with the Huskies and you go all the way back to Selection Sunday there were doubters as to whether or not people felt that Washington was a legitimate number one seed what do you say well I say they were because when you take a look at what transpired during the weekend of Selection Sunday Kentucky Oklahoma State you're off to Chicago for the start of game two March Madness continues here on CBS CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. The new Singular. 
the Hartford Mutual Funds, and by Pontiac.